because I'm not used to classical music, but now that there's urban with it, it's, uh, it, it's quite nice. It goes together. There was this kid who was destined to be great. Began studying at the age of eight, but his father kept him up till late, but he didn't really rave. His keyboard was his only mate, but soon that would turn to hate. Because his dad, when he could make him practice like every day, he had no say, hardly any pay, but one day that would soon change. I've not worked with anything like this before. I would do this every day if I could. Symphonise is a great blend and mixture of orchestral and urban artists coming together and fusing what the two do best, really. We'll, we'll put it back to 90. And we're not trying to be orchestral with a bit of urban or urban with a bit of orchestral. We're just trying to find that place that they meet and we don't know what that style of music is going to be called, but that's what we're going to get to, that's what we're going to create. So on this project, we're working with soft touch artists, um, urban artists, a hip hop uh, producer, Perry Bertels, and a dubstep producer who is uh, Dimitri. And from the Philharmonia side, we have Phil White on trombone and Helena Bucky on violin. Along with those players, we also have a spoken word MC artist, Marcus, uh, who's also playing saxophone, and we have Steve Nutter on bass, who's taking care of the traditional rhythm right. section. So we're going to go, so G, that's for your I'm D. kind of that's responsible for holding the rhythm section together with the bass players, the drummers, the keyboard players, uh, working with the beats guys as well. We've kind of helped to construct some chords, which have become the basis for the work that we're working on, which then goes out to the other departments in the string department, the brass department, and the electronic department, and uh, it all comes together from there, really. All reasonably competent players, just fine-tuning their skills, really, and uh, just reining them in. It's just getting everything, you know, under control, so everybody's working from the same page as part of a team, rather than just playing individually, which I think we have achieved. You know, everybody's kind of working together, playing the same chords, the same song, at the same time. We've worked on it, we've tweaked it, we've brushed it up a bit, we've polished it, and then we've presented that to the rest of the group to jam along to, and that's how the pieces have become constructed. The kids that we've got involved in this project are drawn from two local schools. Uh, we went and did Taster Days, and from that selected, or they self-selected, to come on, on board on the project. So again, we've got a mixture of ages, abilities, ranges, and experience. So what we're hoping to do over the next few days is we'll start with a piece of classic repertoire of Beethoven's Fifth Symphony. And what we're going to do is write three movements over his life. We've got a lyricist who's going to write lyrics and spoken word and look at the early part of Beethoven's life, move on to the second movement in the middle of his life, what was going on, which will fill out a little bit more. But I think everyone will get on board for the final, the da-da-da-da moment. Everyone will love it. Okay, so what's the next chord? We have the first chord as a B flat. What could be the next chord? We would be basing the key around the piece that Beethoven made. We would include bits from his composition, so in part one, the actual like melody, but then we would make up different parts, so just completely different, like the rapping and the um, technology sort of stuff. By themselves, the pieces might not be that good, but then once they all come together, they fit really nicely and it sounds really good. We've got this amazing technology that is incredible, but again, like a, a proper instrument, you need to learn to play it properly. And seeing them fiddle around for the first sort of days of really just looking at buttons and laptops and how do these things work together, and then having that ability to go, oh, I see, I want that there, this sample here. And the nice thing that the, the laptop musicians are playing has all been sampled, so everything that they're playing is something from one of the young people on strings or on, on the, the brass, and that's really added value to it, so they're not just downloading samples that they like, they're, they we give them samples to play, and then they have to make real choices where they put those in, in the pieces. So to see them, again, develop as musicians using technology is fantastic. I have been using electronics to add recording violins, trumpets, making new sounds, just overall adding to the whole music, making it better. 
as Dimitri, the person that works with me, as he comes inside, he shows us how to pause things, record things, edit, and how to then manually add it to the music, where to stop, where to start, things like that. And then potentially one of you can also trigger the scenes. So we will build different scenes for the different parts of the track with some of the recordings. It's really just about the process and about managing to put young people in a situation where they have to, regardless of which school they're from, their age, their background, be able to kind of coordinate and synchronize with each other, be able to kind of be attentive towards each other and listen whilst also keeping an eye on Jason. So it's actually a quite fulfilling experience that you can only get by playing live music with somebody in a room. And these days where everybody's isolated on their own little screen or at computer at home, we tend to find that young people might be involved in making beats, but very rarely would have they been in a band or in a situation where they have to play off each other. And I think that's probably the most beneficial aspect of this. It's just this musicianship and, and you know, this bonding that happens within an orchestra. I've not worked with anything like this before. There's a lot more equipment because at school we've just have instruments and stuff, but here we have all the launch pads and stuff, so it's a lot better. It's a lot more fun as well. When we put it together with like everyone, it sounds it sounds sick. Yeah. Sounds good, yeah. All the things I've learned on the um, on the machine, like everything Perry's told me and stuff, I'm gonna uh, keep that for when I get older and I want to like start doing it. I'm gonna remember all that stuff and start putting it into my own things. Like when I go to college and stuff, it's what I'm gonna do. I've had loads of fun on this project. It's been good. My role in this project is to kind of help with the beat making, um, help the young people get to know the machine, which is a beat making module <laughs> with loads of pads. And yeah, we taught them how to use the program, how to completely be reliable on themselves without having to come to me for anything. There's lots of technology, lots of live instruments, so we just got to keep hold of that. But I think the lads, we had a rehearsal today and everyone, um, pulled it together and it sounded really good. Everyone was like on point and the, the performance should go down well and all the tracks that they've created are, are really good. The whole project is obviously mixing classical music with urban music and maybe not go too classical so they weren't a bit too out of their zone and but not too urban and I think we've got a really good kind of blend of it and the young people have really caught on to that. We have in this project some people who are rappers, MCs, and all they listen to is hip-hop or grime or something. And then we have other people who might only listen to rock. Some people who might only listen to classical. Or, you know, we've got a gospel keys player. And so to be able to integrate and mix all those genres of interest together, of, you know, music that they like, is something with this project that you might not be able to get with other projects. I think there's been some great highlights for me of, of growth of young musicians in this project. You, I think clearly you'll go for the, the people who've never played strings or brass instruments before. And the task of them, and it's an unbelievable task over a few days to pick an instrument up and, and being quite honest, not be able to get a note out of any of them, to move to playing them and pitching correctly and playing in time and looking at me getting cues, getting riffs, playing all the right thing in the right place and being so musical on their instruments. It's, it's a real pleasing thing to see those live instruments being played. At the start of the project, Miles, for example, came along. Um, I don't know, usually he's quite quiet in lessons and he just went and picked up the trombone and had a go. Um, little did I know he was going to take it home that weekend to practice and annoy his parents, but he didn't care because he wanted to go home, take that trombone home and make sure his part was right. You know, he comes back the next day talking about the trombone, talking about things that he wants to do and hopefully I can kind of get him some lessons in school to make sure that that happens. So he's, he's loving that opportunity. I learned a new instrument to play than I couldn't before. And then stay in with those vowels and go da, da, da. Yes, good. Use this finger, the right thing for the vowels. Just play it slowly. Everyone together. Everyone together. And. New is better. 
So I thought I might as well do brass. I'll be learning the trombone from now on. Same, like, learning the trombone. And I might get some more lessons when we go back to school. I'll be leaving with new friends. And a smile on my face. I think I've made progress and I'm enjoying it, which is good. We, we all split off into our own little rooms and it's like, you know everybody in it, but when you come together, it's like, it works. It's been good. She's taught me everything I know about the violin. So it's credit to her for everything that's happened. I've been helping some of the kids on, on violin, uh, mixing sounds into what Mitri's doing on the electronics so that he can then change it, manipulate it and things. And there's been a little bit of violin teaching technique involved in the sort of early stages. But other than that, it's been sort of brainstorming with the kids and, and asking them to, to come up with, with things that they think would fit Beethoven and the different movements and composing and then playing with them in that way and recording. You guys can play. So you've just played Because then after that you go... So if we then add, it's called a passing note. So if you go... So you're adding, instead of going three times playing G, you're going... Perfect, yeah, really good. So we built it up from playing just open strings and then gradually using left hand. And I tried to sort of build their confidence and actually the, the level that they're playing at now would be kind of, you know, akin to grade one sort of thing in just a few days because they, they've been so sort of absorbed in doing this. We've done it quite intensively. And I think hopefully it's coming across that, that they're really enjoying it. I think because there's so many people involved, however small their role, they're all contributing and they can all see how actually each of their parts is completely vital. And it really, really builds and, you know, it's, it's because of this sum of small parts that, that it's, you know, they've created something really, really sounding very good now. It's just an amazing experience. I actually got to realise how fun it was to perform live and work with people. The viola player that was leading last time, she uh, wrote a recommendation letter to my head teacher and a few other people to get me to start lessons again. Well, if it weren't for that letter, then I wouldn't be playing wouldn't be doing the course that I'm on for music. So. I like performing, to be honest. It's like my favourite part about it. But I'd like to become a teacher one day. That's actually what I've learned from this project. As long as you're putting the work in, like, you know where you want to go and you have your path dedicated, you will make it. If you try your hardest, you will make it. Yeah. Beethoven was a great pianist. He unfortunately went deaf, but he still stayed on his grind and he still carried on playing the keys. He was, like, he was really talented and he used to be partially deaf and um, his hearing got worse and worse yes. and his last performance when he was fully deaf was like, seemed to be the best somehow. Yeah. And that's why he's inspirational to me. Beethoven never stopped that. Like he always just carried on going, no matter like through like from for twenty years he was going deaf basically, and he still never stopped doing his music, and that's why he's my inspiration. It's good. To say the challenging that. part is um, when we go from the practice room over there, we move like over to yeah. the live performance room, and it's like it's all in a different tempo and stuff, and we have to like yeah. negotiate together. So yeah, I like it. It's different. Yeah. I'm not I'm not doing anything like it before. The fingers on the beat that talent man can use it. Beethoven, musical heaven, beat them keys like twenty four seven. Beethoven, musical heaven, beat them keys like twenty four seven. I think they're really nice people, really nice stuff to work with. They help they help you with what you need to do. So I like being here working with Marcus, doing lyrics. But I used it. Life got after me, but I used it to create. It became a part of me, life got off me, but I used it to be to create that was potential, so I used it. Practicing, rehearsing, that's what I'm here for. I really enjoy it, I'm not gonna lie, yeah. Stuck a few, yeah, stuck a few of my ideas in there, yeah. Because he threw in one line, I threw in another, he threw in one line. Yeah, it felt, it felt nice. Writing your own lyrics and how it sounds when you actually rap them, it feels good.
I'm a little bit nervous. Well, because like there's so many people doing different things. Like if I make a small mistake, it's not really going to be noticed. So that'll be okay. I'm looking forward to it because like everyone can see I've actually progressed in yeah about like three days time. Yeah, just to do experience, isn't it? Try it out. So we're into the final day. The young musicians, for the first time, will see the, the concert space and the stage and how that's set. And they'll get used to that room and we'll run the pieces and run it just as any orchestra would rehearse. We are a group of musicians together. We are from different schools, orchestra, urban artists, but actually we are one band. And seeing children from the same school who probably haven't spoken to each other before and now chatting to each other, and you, you, there's, a, there's a real feeling that they're gonna take that forward and move on and in their school music. There's, there's, there's chance now that they'll get together and start to perform bits. I'm, I'm also very hopeful that they'll come to Soft Touch more and start to access the equipment here because they can carry on doing all the wonderful stuff they've done. It was amazing. I loved every feeling. It was just great. I loved the energy from the crowd because like, we didn't really know what to expect but everyone like clapped and everything and everyone was supporting and it was just really amazing and I'm really great that I was able to join this experience. Oh, it was just like when the adrenaline just hit and I just thought to just get pumping on the stage it was so fun and then I, I was just loving every moment of it. And then just looking at the crowd and everyone was just there probably hyping with everyone else was just great. Actually, before I started, I couldn't play this at all. But then, when I got on stage, I just went for it and I now can do it. I might go to soft touch some days to practice with Phil, but sometimes I might practice at home, like school. I felt proud of myself and it was like amazing. Yeah, we learned how to work as a team. Fun, worthwhile, we'll definitely do it again. It was fun, we got everybody dancing, everybody did a little bit of a dab, all had a good fun, made some amazing music. And it's been an amazing experience watching them grow and have their eyes open to the world of music. It's very hard to say, boys, classical music's really good, have a listen. But when they experience it, in a sense like this, it suddenly becomes cool. I hope it just gets them to that next level where they become producers of their own work. I want them to carry on being involved, seeing these lads grow. I'm going to be continuing with trombone, as well as guitar and piano and drum. I thought it was very good, and if I can, I'll come here again. It was really fantastic. This project has really inspired me as a teacher to bring in aspects of this project and kind of incorporate that into their music education, because we can get so bogged down in kind of everyday curriculum content and really kind of making sure that that's followed. And actually, are we really looking at the kind of students' really all round musical experience? Thank you, Soft Touch, for bringing me onto this experience. Uh, thank you to the Lord Mayor who I heard was here and thank you to everyone who's been supporting and hopefully more shows to come. <laughs> <laughs>